This is my Rev B board that I just finished. I have nice connectors for plugging in the battery in the micro. I have a control for the fans to turn on and off. I have a control to turn on and off the relay, which will turn on and off the micro inverter. And I've got my sense monitor hooked up to monitor the whole thing. So these are my uh, battery charge controllers and battery current limiters. This is my Power Queen 50 ampere hour to 48 volt battery running it. Got a couple of 15 amp UL listed DC fuses here. MDA 15 or AGC 15. Want fast blow. This is an alarm that goes off for the Rev A board because it didn't control when to shut down. Now I have control on the board with hysteresis so that it shuts down at 48 volts at the microinverter, which probably needs to be a little lower for a battery. And I'll turn back on when it reaches full charge on the battery. It, I thought I could do four because I have two of these heat sinks, but the other heat sink has holes right behind where the MOSFET goes, and uh, that's not gonna work. So, anyway, Rev A, Rev B, a little bit bigger, but now it's got control over turning on, turning itself on and off, and turning the fan on and off, and turning the microinverter on and off. And you can see here now we're producing, this inverter here's a dual, point miles, dual HM, 700 NT output maximum I've seen out of it is about 670 watts peak um, continuous is like 659 <clears throat> great great inverter easy to set up this is my little mounting bracket um, yeah very easy to set up and my data transfer unit is over here recording it all and that's talking with an RS-45 cable it goes out to my garage where I monitor my power and control this inverter for zero export. It's really cool. Fun little project. I'm hoping to have this done as a product before the end of the year. And, uh, you know, I'll get them at NC Solar Electric LLC. NCSolarElectric.com Give me a call. 877-58-SOLAR don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, this new board is working great now. It's been running at full power for the last uh, hour. That should be the hottest component. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. The drain of the MOSFET right there. That's the thermal switch. Long way from where it switches at 90. Beautiful. Nothing majorly hot. Uses aren't hot. Relays aren't hot. Transistors aren't even. Yeah. Be good. Mid forties, the worst. Beautiful. All right, today I did thermal testing on this ring. B board and it worked great, amazing. I even tested it with the fan off, tilted the heatsink vertical so it can convection cool it. It's pretty much stable at about 70 72 degrees, which is uh, good. It could run all day at that temperature without um, a fan. That was at a 27 28 degree set of raid ambient, and those are 72 degrees. Centigrade, Celsius, not Fahrenheit.
There is a thermal switch on the board that will shut it down if it gets to 90. Um, even at that, it could run at 90, but it would be really hot to the touch and you know, anything that's touching. It was working great, and uh, when the sun was out and my solar was producing, my it raises the line voltage here from 240 to 248. And when the line voltage is 248, this guy puts out 704 watts. Point miles, HM700NT put out over 700 watts when the voltage is high because it's actually less than its rated output current. But amazing, awesome. So yeah, everything's working great. Just about ready to start putting this thing in the box.